I'm Bonnell Williams, and have I got a special treat for you. And for those of you who have been hating on me for years, you're just gonna hate on me some more. This man models, he acts, he's been called the sexiest man alive, and a whole bunch of other good stuff. But what intrigues me the most about him is he's got the most phenomenal personality, and he's such a great guy. And he is in bed with me today. There's no question that actor and model JR is one sexy little morsel. The New York native always calls him a stir whenever he enters a room. And despite an extensive list of career credits, he continues to push forward. Currently starring in a new show on Glow TV titled G-Spot, along with an appearance in the indie film Violet Tendencies, JR proves he's much more than just stellar muscle mass. Please welcome to Pillow Talk. The one and only Mr. JR. Welcome. Thank you so much. That was really nice. Thank you for the kind words. That was really, really nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. This is like, I'm in heaven right now. I mean, you just have no idea. This is, this is a comfortable bed here. Oh, it, oh, you just have no idea. You have no so. idea. This is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, why don't we just start? Because this is like in mind my manners. Okay. Um, you go by Just JR. I see that a lot in a lot of your promotional materials. Who is JR or Just JR? I am, um, I'm a guy from the Bronx uh, who uh, just likes to work really hard and has big dreams and, and, and is doing anything possible to make them come to fruition. You know? You've done some acting yes. and you've done some modeling. Which, right. would you, which did you do first? Um, acting was always my, always my primary focus, you know, um, when, I was, when I was a kid. Um, my mom, you know, uh, in the Bronx put me in um, a theater um, community, a community center. Um, they did a, they put on theater productions a couple times a year to raise money for the community and stuff like that. And it, and it's just something that I fell in love with. Um, so acting was alright, but but at, with modeling here in New York, you have to you have to act, you have to model, you have to do commercials, you have to do everything. So um, modeling was a stepping stone. Um, I I was never passionate about it. But I appreciate it's a lot of work. It teaches you a lot. It teaches you a lot about presence, confidence, um, what works for you, what doesn't, things that you can use towards acting in life, you know. How to, when you enter a room, how to carry yourself. You know, Molly does, it has a lot of great attributes that people don't uh, really, you know, think about that or give, uh, give props to. But how do you react when so many people look at you and they just, really, they just, they lust after you? I mean, they really. They're looking at the physical. I mean, you happen to be a great guy, also, anyway. Oh, but I'm just saying, does that make you uncomfortable by all that attention or all that type of attention? You know, that is the main reason that I have just Jr. You know, mm. honestly, I have a lot of people. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I think a lot of people have this issue, but me particularly, I know a lot of people have like a perception. You know, you know. Oh, when they meet you, oh, I didn't think you'd be like that. Usually, a lot of times I, they say that, and I don't get that. You know, I don't know why we tend to kind of put that type of um, um, judgment or, or not, not that it's bad, I mean it's a human thing, we all do, I know I, I pretty much do it myself, but it, and it happens a lot. So I just say, just, I'm just a regular guy, I really am. See, we don't want to hear that, we don't want, somebody looks like you and tell me I'm they're just, a regular guy, I'm just, we okay. gotta hate you for something. <laughs> about like growing up, right. did you ever have issues with like light-skinned kids versus dark skin? was that an, ever an issue in your friends or family? You, you know, my family's from the south, and you know, down south that's, you know, that brown paper bag thing. <laughs> That 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 that's 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 sad but very true, and probably still holds up to this day. Um, but my family was 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 um, quite wonderful in, in that way. But I didn't, I didn't uh, cross paths with that those issues very much. Um, the only time I really crossed paths with the light skin dark skin thing was in my homeland. I was going to ask you about yeah, it. Okay. In my homeland, that was that was the first time where um, the the work that I got was. Not just, I, don't, I think it's, it was beyond the fact that you look a certain way. I work very hard to be professional. I work very hard for people. You have, people have to like you. So I think a lot of times when people would book me, it was not necessarily a look thing, I think because they like me. And I think, that's, I think that's very important, you know, likability and, and all that. And with the light skin, dark skin thing, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of us that went along with that, that, um, this is right, and, and you know, dark is just, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just okay, right? And it, and, and and that still stands true to, to this day. You know, it, it always kind of bothered me a little bit because you know, I always said to myself, if, if I had a chance to do this, it'll be done right. 
Um, what is your like fitness routine? Like? I and don't please don't tell me it's something simple. No, no, I no, I, I gym gym is my stress relief. Okay. I hit the gym at least four or five times a week. You know, if I have something coming up like a part or something, then I you know I, I, if I have to bulk up a little bit, I will. Um, but I hit it four times a week. Uh, it's just a great stress. Relief. I zone out. You know, some people meditate or do yoga or that's my thing. Gym's my thing. Like, if I don't go, maybe three days in a row, but that's the part the longest I, I, I will go without going, I, I'll start to freak out. You know? Now what about your diet? What is that like? Do you eat anything? I, <laughs> I do. I, I actually do. I, um, see, first of all, I can't cook. Yeah, I really can't, I can't cook. So uh, every, everything pretty much is steamed. You know, so dinner for me would be something like salmon and, and steamed vegetables, which is very simple. I love salmon and steamed vegetables. And it's good for you. It's excellent. And it's for good you. for you. you know, because I have like the rice. With you know, it. I have I have I have my cereal. You know, I I, I can I can make a hell of a sandwich. <laughs> you, you will not believe this sandwich. I could, I, I, I put Subway out of business. <laughs> but uh, I believe in um, um, everything in moderation. I I go to McDonald's here and there. Yeah, you gotta you know kind of you know uh, break up the monotony and, and enjoy life. You know what I mean? Go to McDonald's. Hey, well, I do that on occasion. But I have a thing for French fries. With really good French fries. And, and, and McDonald's got that a lot. You must encounter haters. We all do, yeah. I think we all do, especially when do. you start to... Because I always say, I know I'm doing something right or not. Because people are always surprised when I tell them, yeah, I have haters. I shield a lot of that foolishness from my viewers because it's not. I'm not trying to give those people a platform. Right, gotcha. But what do haters say about you? Or do you even know what they say about you? Oh, I know. I know. I've been told I have plastic surgery. You, you that's what I heard. heard. I heard you had implants. See? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. I was like, at, br at brunch one Sunday. So okay. <laughs> I said, well, shit, can I get some? Because they look like that. Yeah, but I thought about, you know, which, which you said a little earlier, that the fact that they're talking about you. Exactly. You know, like, literally, these are people who I don't know, I, don't, I, had, I haven't had a conversation with, you know. Right. And they, they know your name. And the fact that they can put your face with it, you know what I mean? And right. hold a whole conversation about you, that, that, that says something. And create. I mean, you can go to the extent of creating all, yeah, all that stuff. We've had some, yeah, there's been some stories. There was a big weekend but here in, in New York City. Huge, huge. Huge with the Pride and then the legislative victory. Yes, happy Pride. Happy you. Pride, happy, happy Pride. pride to, yes, and the, uh, the Equality Act was passed. That's very exciting. The 32nd vote came from um, Stephen Salad. Mm. He's a... Uh, uh, Attorney, politician, uh, senator, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, I know he resides in Poughkeepsie, but I think he's in Albany. And um, you know, he 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 is Republican, and he just found it in him, you know, to uh, say, you know, let these people vote. You know, I have an aunt, right. I have an aunt that says, you know, what's wrong with the fairies? Let the fairies vote. Let the fairies <laughs> vote. You know. As a resident of New York, will you be heading to the altar anytime soon? I. We have to find somebody. Well, for, first of all, to, to to get that. But yeah, I would like to. I would definitely would uh, like to get married. So I think I think the option is important. You know? It is the option. The option is very important. important. You know? Most and most importantly, if, if if you and I together and God forbid something happened to me, you have a say. If you and I were together, yeah, I definitely would have a say. But you know what <laughs> I'm saying? Because in, in, in a lot of families, but a lot, in a lot of situations, right. you know, this is a person that's been by your side. You know. Um, for years, and, and they share life with you, and you have family members that kind of, for whatever reason, you know, have their ways, and they inherit everything, and, right. and, and they have a say about your death, and and, and, and how you're, you know, uh, you know, should be uh, put away, and that's that's uh, that's um, it's, it's harmless. harmless. Yeah, it's, it's harmless. Uh, yeah, and I think we, you know, so I think so often we're so busy in the moment of a relationship. That we don't take time to take care of the business. That's true. Too. That's true. And we really need to have our paperwork in order. Yeah. Because I mean, I think I think a will will stand up regardless of, of of those actual marriage papers. You know what I mean? Of course. You know, a lot of us don't want to deal with talk about those subjects. You know? Right. Yeah. Because it's hard. It is hard. So, what kind of person would you date? Honesty is very important. To me. I'm honest. Okay. Yeah. Honesty is very important to me. Um, confidence. Um, I like someone that's kind of, I, I would like, you know, like, I, I work very hard, I have my goals, I'm doing my thing over here, I would like to date someone that's doing their thing, whatever that may be, you know, um, and, and when, at the end of the day, we can kind of come together and just be, you know, be cool, I would like that, you know, I would like, gotta have a sense of humor, you know what I mean, that type of thing. What kind of guys do you like? Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> Really, for me, I like, 
I like funny people who have a sense of humor because I can be very I can be very sarcastic, mm -hmm. and some people can perceive that cost as caustic if they don't know me. But it's never my my intent is never to hurt anybody. To hurt anybody, and a lot of people don't see that because I don't necessarily show that on my show or anything. A lot of sometimes I do, mm -hmm. but so, someone who can make me laugh, someone who has a life, okay. someone who lives it authentically, uh, someone who is man enough to be emotionally available mm -hmm. and honest with himself. And strong enough to let, allow me to do the same. Well, that's just too much. <laughs> so, so what do I have to do? I have to create a show so I can get hot. I got you. Like, I got you. Like, no, I liked you got it. it. And would you get married? You know, for a long time, I just thought that that would not be an option for me. But um, I allowed the universe to unfold its mm -hmm. greatness in my life, and if that is what is. Uh, it's meant for me, then I would definitely embrace it wholeheartedly like I do uh, any other endeavor that so I'm passionate about. about. So, and, 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 and that's the best thing about it, you have that option. You have the option. That's so important. that's so important. What would your wedding be like? I don't know. I know you thought about it. Actually, I haven't, actually. I was really? like, I never thought about, like, well, I thought about the possibility of getting married, but actually the actual wedding, I'd have to hire somebody to do that. I'm just like, make it fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what to do, what to be. Um, I definitely would, I think I would want it to involve the sea because I, wow, the, nice. the sound of the waves crashing is very tranquil to me mm -hmm. and I've always grown up around water, even though I live in Atlanta now, but I've always grown up around water, I've always appreciated water. So it, it'd have to be something I like the, near water because I love the soothing sounds. If you are in a relationship, would you allow or would you maintain um, a profile online maybe profile on some on sites such as VGC or Wow that, for Adam. Well, is that well, cheating? To be honest, I you know, I'm not knocking any, I don't knock anybody in what they do, but I just think, you know, relationships are hard enough as it is. You know. And I, I think, you know, if you if you're meeting somebody and this is just kind of like fun for you, y'all have an understanding, then I guess I guess it really wouldn't matter, you know, but if if this is someone that, you know, you, you really are investing into and you you're giving it a lot to and you really have expectations that's something you would have to discuss. You gotta compromise. So I personally I wouldn't go with that. Could you date someone whose HIV status was opposite yours? I why well, I say this, I think everybody's positive to the you know, prove it negative. Oh. That's my thing, you know. That that you just get that out the window, you know. If you wanna sh show me your negative, then I'll appreciate it, you know. But until then I'm thinking you're positive. That's that's all. So um I already I, I already have. Mm. Regardless okay. if I know it or not, you, right. we already have. We 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 have to stop being that um we have to be, stop being so harsh, you know, because we we all we, we all we got, you know, right. we're all we got, you know, and that's 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 what I love about flow because it, it's 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 trying to bring back that unity. How old, as far as the age difference, would be too old or too young? Ten years. That's a good question. You know why? Because um, I'm starting to uh, uh, struggle with that myself. I always say you should only date someone maybe three years old or three years younger, and that I, I you know I I used to say that, but. Um, I had I came across a friend recently that's uh, dating someone that's two years young, ten years younger than him, and he's happy as all get out. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean you know, tender wrongs would do that for you, you know. But uh, <laughs> but I mean, like he's he, like he they they're solid. They've been been together for a couple of years now, and, and you know I I think I may have been wrong in reference to um, putting that much emphasis on the age, you know. Yeah, but could you do like an Anna Nicole? I'm thirty and he's eighty. Hell to the gnaw. I'm like, <laughs> and if I'm 80, I don't, I mean, if I, I wouldn't want somebody 30, I, do, I don't have the patience for that. For me, even like now, like I'm physically attractive sometimes to somebody that might be younger, but the fact of trying to like deal with that on an emotional level, especially with the experience and the journey that I've had. That's, what I'm, that's the main point, your life. At, at, at a certain point in your life, you know what I mean, when it comes to um, dating someone, with someone, you need some type of challenge, right? You know, you can't just date anybody, you know what I mean? You can't date someone and then you have to show them and help them. I don't want to, you know, teach anybody anything. So tell me about uh, your show and the work that you do with Glow. Glow. Um, I'm, I'm new to the Glow family, you know, shout out to Glow TV and, and, Glow and Maurice, Maurice and, 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 and Rick and, and 
old man that showed me that they're really, a really great bunch of guys. And I'm not just saying that they're just they're, they're really great. And um, uh, what I love about Glow, if, if you go to the network, GlowTVNetwork.com, go to the network and um, just kind of browse around the different shows, you'll see everything's about unity. Right. You know. You know. I, I think I probably in our, in our own communities. We have the drag queens and the dragons or whatever. You got the ballroom kids over here. Right. You got the little models over here and the actors over here. And, and you got our little, you know, our little polit politicians, you know. And everyone's separate and everyone kind of puts each other down at certain points. Right. And, and, you know, we judge each other harshly. But we can't expect people outside of us to respect us if we don't knock them off. You know. And because I think. We, regardless, well, I'm sorry, because, but regardless of what, that drag queen or that ballroom kid or whoever, that's. That's your brother, right? You know what At I mean. End of the day, it that's really the, is. You know, he's all you have. You have to defend him. You can't knock him. You know? And a lot of times, we, I think it's just we don't have education about other people's experience. Right. And I'm just as guilty of that myself because I remember um, a couple of years ago, we I got into a conversation about transsexuals with some friends, and I was like, you know, I don't really know. I knew one lady, mm -hmm. uh, my friend Tracy from Atlanta, but at that point, I kind of just knew her casually. I knew of her. We'd met a couple of times, and I said, well, you know what? For me, I said, well, I need to educate myself because I don't know a thing about it. So I can't, how am I right. commenting on your life when I don't know a thing about it? And sure. I actually did an interview with her, and that opened my eyes so much. And I have such a whole appreciation and respect for the trans community because I've decided to open my mind and let them gotcha. be, share. Let, and let them be them. And let them you be know them. what I mean? I, I, um, a lot of us are ignorant to a lot of different aspects of our own community. Right. Which is okay, but that's, that's the point. You know, you may not understand it. And if you don't want to take the time to understand, that's okay too. Just, just respect. What advice would you tell a young person who was struggling with maybe wow, their spirituality that's... or sexuality or bullying? Um, Self-esteem is so important. You know, um, when I was coming up, well, a lot of people, even just then, there's no place you can really go. There's places now. There's this hotlines and and, and nonprofit uh, organizations that cater to uh, you know the, the things of this nature. But um, when I was coming up, you know. It was all you, you know, and um, I, fortunately my family raised me with a good self-esteem. So when I was faced and dealing with this, you know, I just kind of gave myself a hug and said, all right, let's go ahead. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll, I'll never forget, it was uh, June of 98. Um, I, was at a I was at a club in the city, and it was one of those clubs where everyone's engaged, right, you know. And someone passed me uh, Next Magazine on the way out, you know, it was passed out. And I, you know, I'm looking through it, it's like, oh, this case. But I held on, I held, instead of throwing it off, I just held on to it. And I'm looking through it, looking through it. And I said, I got just something's like, something's, you know, clicking with me. And I started, like, calling, like, the different um, um, bars, and trying to ask questions. I had no <laughs> clue what, what I was doing. Well, what kind of people go there? And, and what type of music y'all play? And they were like, and all you heard was Queens in the background. Ah, girl, get the phone. <laughs> you know, and I, and I remember driving down here. One night by myself in the summer, and just I just wanted to go to a bar, and I went to uh, I think Two Potatoes was my first bar. Really? I think that was the first bar. I think it was Two Potato, and um, I went in there, and it was just it just wasn't what I expected. It was just everybody was drunk, <laughs> and you know it was like a cheers. You know everyone knew each other. Right. They were like a family. You know what I mean? And it just wasn't what I expected because you know I didn't know any better. But um, you know I eventually you meet some friends, and, and, and I saw Harmonica Sunday perform. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just she made me laugh, and she was very, she, she was very nice. That, I, I'm very, you know, um, uh, I really, I, I'm very, very, I, I admire her very much, you know, because when I was coming up, I, from that person I was to where I am now, mm -hmm. when she was always there. When she was always there. I, I tell her all the time you know, when she, I saw her. She has her. no idea the impact she uh, has on people. And what do you think about images in the media of black gay men? What you see on these reality shows and all this kind of stuff, you know. You could say, I, I know what a lot of people want to say, but you know, that's them. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to be them. You know, you can't, you can't knock them for being them. Um, and let's face it, if these guys were the complete opposite of how they are, how entertaining how would that be? Thing. That would not make good television. You know? But you know, that's what I like about Glow. Um, it's it, and, and the show and cut that we're going to do. It's actually giving a voice, a spotlight to, um, to, to our voice. Community, you know, and you can say what you want to say, and I can say what I want to say, and anything goes. You know, I, I'm, I mean, it, it's it's going to be groundbreaking. It, it, 
really is, you know, and just the fact that you have that, that platform, that forum to, to get things off your chest. You know, imagine you having a brunch uh, this Sunday, you know, and, and you have a selective guest list. You invited RuPaul, and you invited um, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Wilson Cruz, and uh, say Keith Boykin, and Lee Hayes, okay, and yourself, and some wine. Now you know that's going to be that's gonna be powerful. some conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, very powerful. It, you know, and so that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be a panel, a group, a group of a series of panel discussions with um, wonderful people in our community, very talented. You know, so from socialites to to politicians and entertainers, and uh, um, I think we got something. So, will you be a moderator? Would it be like, like kind of like the view kind of setup? I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to be the host, man. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to I'm going to jerk those chains, and I'm going to get them <laughs> to an extent because you know you know you got to be you know. You, you want to get them riled up. You want them to really say what they want to say, and uh, you, know, you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna come with it. What do you think about when you hear the term "no fats, no fems"? You have you have a lot of superficial people out there that 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 um, that's, that are superficial. That's their world, you know. Um, regardless of what it stems from, if they, if they have personal issues, who knows? But you know, um, all the beautiful people that I know are beautiful uh, for other groups that they're beautiful outside of. Uh, physical, these are people that have always, uh, I was able to rely on, and be there. if you can't surround yourself with people that can support you, and really and genuinely are happy for you, you know, life, it, life is it's, it's just not worth it, it's, you, you don't have to put yourself through too much drama, life is already hard enough, you know, I had to get to that point in my life, I literally had to cut off friends, um, you know, that, that I, enough was enough already, you know, right. but, you know the, the, the ones that keep taking, you know, the ones that don't support you, you know, here you are supporting them, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, they, you know, they know who they are. Right. And we all know the type of friend that we are, you know. Exactly. And I think it's important that, you know, you need to step up. If I can't do this for you, or you, you can't do this for me, there's, there's a problem, you know. Especially if you want to use that word friend. And I always say, look at the people in your life. If your life is, if the, if your life is jacked up, look at the people around you, because they are only a direct reflection of your level of consciousness. So exactly. when you make the mind, you make up your to. mind to change. You, you, you it's, change. it's the truth. It's just simple as that. Until, until you want to change, you got to make a change. If you want to change, you got to make a change. Isn't that a Michael Jackson song? <laughs> a man in the mirror or something. place you take a look at yourself. Yep, and you make that change. change. So what is next for Jr.? What is next for me? Um, um, right now, this is a show. I'm still, I'm still. Uh, Acting still my passion. I mean, even though this isn't necessarily acting, um, um, this is giving me uh, publicity. Look up here, I'm on your show. Praise the Lord, God is good. Got every time, <laughs> all the time. And um, uh, but acting still my primary focus. I still go out there and audition for for things, and I still uh, um, I'm very passionate about that, and I will continue to do so. Okay. And I always like to close with the question that. My all-time favorite, Miss Oprah Winfrey, always asks, Oprah. "What do you know for sure?" What do I know for sure? That's a good one. I like that. What do you know for sure? Um, I know for sure that having a good sense of self is very important. You know, you got you got to love yourself. You know, you, you know, everyone has to take that time. You know, even if you have to talk to yourself, why do I do what I do, or, or why do I love this? You know, if it's bad, maybe you should change it. If it's good, then maybe you can, you know. Um, so having a good sense of self and and, and, um, and then going through life with that, I always feel good. Which is really that is beautiful. Yeah. That's why I say you see you're beautiful inside Aww. and out. It's like oh now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to sleep. I'm gonna be like sniffing that pillow all night. Now let me stop. <laughs> thank you for having me. Though. Really no, I really you. thank you for coming really and climbing fun. in bed. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, and I just wish you continued success because you're just you're just amazing. And, the community, you deserve all the success you have, oh, thank you so and much. then some. Thank you. And, and to you too, I'm, I'm, enjoy, I'm enjoying watching your show, and I hope to have you on our cut. So, and you can have me anytime, oh. any place, anywhere. You just, you just holler. I want to thank my special guest, Mr. Jr., who's just mwah, so, so wonderful. Thank you all for all the support that you've been giving to 3LW TV, Glow TV, and all of the Pillow Talk videos. I'm Lonelle Williams, always stand in your light.